In this week's Tableau Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to shade under an area chart. So you can see in this example here that I have the ISM index, which is a, mon a an index of all indexes, and it's, a, it's kind of like an economic indicator. And one of the things we want to do is be able to just shade the area between the 50% and the line. So how do we make that work? Well, first I need to connect to some data. In this example, I'm going to look at this Quandl data set that is the PMI Composite Index. And we can use the Information Lab's Web Data Connector to do that. So I'm going to click on Connect to Data, go to Web Data Connector, and I'm going to go to data.theinformationlab.co.uk and hit Enter. That'll bring up the Information Lab's Web Data Connector page. And on here, I want to pick the Quandl option. So let me just go ahead and expand that out. Pick Quandl. And now I need to just get the Quandl code. So I'm going to come back over to Chrome. I'm going to copy this Quandl code. Paste it in here. And click on Get Headers. OK, so the first field is the date. The second field is a float and just click on Get Data. Now what Tableau is doing at this point is it's going to go ahead and import the, um, the, the data. So I'm just going to call this ISM PMI index. And then I'm just going to go ahead and go to the new sheet. All right, so there we go. So I can view the data and see what it looks like and make sure that it's what I'm looking for. OK, so we've got the date and the index. Perfect. So the easiest way to look at this is I'm just going to go ahead and option drag my date field to the columns. I'm going to look at it by continuous months and then just put the index on the rows. OK, so very, very simple so far. Uh, let me go ahead and delete this. Now what I need to do is I basically, I know that 50 determines whether we're in a bull or a bear market. So what I need to do is I need to create a new calculated field. And I'm going to call this um, uh, index versus 50. And what I want to do is I just want to take the index value and subtract 50. So that's going to give me the difference between 50 and this index line. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and drag that onto the, uh, the so you see it retains the same shape, which is nice. But I want this one to be an area chart. So I can go, go, go ahead and make this one an area. From here, I'm going to make a dual axis. And you'll notice that now I have my measure names on the color shelf. So I'm going to go to my All Marks card, remove measure names from the color, because I want them to be the same color. And now the trick is, I can't just synchronize these, because when I do that and I choose Synchronize, you'll see that they don't line up right. But I know they have the same shape. So what I'm going to do here is I'm first going to double click on this axis and untick the include zero and hit OK. And you can see it looks like one is over top of the other, but I'm not sure it's quite precise because it looks like maybe there's some sticking out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and edit this axis again. And I'm going to fix it to go from 20 to 80. So basically 30 units on either side of 50. And then here, what I can do is I can edit this axis and make it go from minus 30 to 30. Hit OK. And now they're synchronized perfectly. Everything looks right. So I'm going to go back to my all, all marks card and do a bit of formatting. I'm going to make them both black. And I'm going to go to my second index. And I'm going to go ahead and reduce the transparency, maybe make it a lighter gray, something like that. OK, so that looks nice. I, I like the way that looks. From here, I don't want this difference from the index to be in my tooltip. So I'm just going to go ahead here and untick the Include in Tooltip option. And then I can right click and choose to, to, sh to hide the header. All right, so that's good so far. Um, but now what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to indicate, uh, if I look back over here at my original, you'll see that I have red and green lines, if you're not colorblind for whether or not we're in a recession. Well, I have another data set. So um, I, ha I have a data set for recessions. So if I go over here to Excel, I have a data set that tells me whether or not we're in a recession. 
So it basically just has a series of dates. Okay, so we can go ahead and close that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna edit my data source. And in Tableau 10, we can join data, we can join um, disparate data sources. So I'm gonna add a new connection. It's an Excel file. I'm gonna to navigate to the folder where I have it. And we're gonna pick my recession dates. And you can see here it joined on date, which is what I want. Um, I don't need to bring this data source. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and leave that in here for now. Uh, because we can use that in the calculation later. Okay, so now I want this to be a left join because I want all of my dates from my Quandl data source and just my dates in the, on the, uh, uh, so let's, again, we could call this um, ISM PMI index. All right, go to our new data source. I'm sorry, go back to our worksheet. All right, and what we'll end up here with is a second date field. Basically, it's the only thing that gets brought in to the data source. Okay, so now what I can do is I can create a calculation, and I'm just going to call it recession. And I'm just going to say if null. Uh, no, I don't want to do if null. I want to say if is null my date from my recession then um, no, else, actually, I could even make this even, let's make this even easier. Let's just make it is null on the date. Hit OK, and we get a nice true false. I can now go to my line and drag that field to the color shelf. All right, so now this is, uh, I think I need to make it an attribute. There we go. And now we can see that we have, um, we have the multiple colored lines. So I'm gonna need to go here uh, and maybe we could change these colors a bit. So the true dates are going to be, so the, uh, when it is null, um, that means um, we are not in a recession, so that's good. So let's go ahead and maybe make that green and then let's maybe make the falses maybe orange or something like that, or let's make maybe make the trues blue, I'm sorry. the. So when it, so again, if you think about my calculation, I'm saying is null on the date. So if it's null, that means we are not in a recession. Um, so that would be the falses. So I want that to be a positive color and we want the trues to be orange. Okay, so it didn't really change the colors at all there. And what I wanna do here is I wanna move these marks to the front and then uh, we're good to go. So the last thing I'm gonna do here is go ahead and remove my axis, I don't care about the times. All right, and uh, now I can go ahead and throw this in a nice little dashboard. And uh, we could give it a nice title. And we could say the, what do they call this over in the Quandl data source? We could call it the PMI composite index. We could say the PMI composite index with recession indicators. And we could say um, uh, orange equals, uh, oh, sorry, blue equals recession dates, or blue equals recession. Maybe make this a smaller font, maybe like 10 point. And I could go ahead and maybe make it uh, the tablet blue, make it bold, something like that. All right, and then maybe I'll make this maybe 18 points and maybe make it bold. All right, so now we have a nice little uh, chart like that. And from here, I'm gonna just go ahead and do a bit of formatting. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my row and column dividers because I, I don't like those at all my view. And maybe I'll go to my uh, grid lines and make my grid lines maybe some, I like these uh, dotted circles. And then I could go ahead and turn on my axis rulers. And maybe make those like this gray. Okay, so now you can see uh, I could shrink this view up a little bit, maybe make it 
900 by, or maybe 800 by 600, something like that. And now we have a nice little view. Um, if I want, I could then add in, perhaps I want to add in a date filter. So let me go back to my sheet. And I could maybe, uh, let's go ahead and let's show the filter for this. And this will give us a nice little date range. So then I can come back over here, show my date filter. Maybe go ahead and float this right up here, something like that. And I could call this, uh, choose a date range. All right, so there we go. So now my users can just kind of zoom in if they want. Uh, maybe they want to, or they could click in here and maybe put in, maybe they want to start a January of 2000. Oops. Okay, I need to, looks like, oops, I messed up there. So I want to make it January of 2000. So you just kind of drag over until you get it kind of where you need it to be. So something like that, you get the idea. So um, it looks like my index got messed up here. There we go. Okay, so uh, again, I could just drag it back out and make it every, every month. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. Um, it was fun little fun little exercise there. And I hope you have a great day. Let me know if you have any questions.